Hello little creative pandas and welcome to my channel. It's called Wanda's Art. I'm Wanda Panda. I'm making art. And in this week's video we are finally getting to the forms of the brushes. So I would just say let's just jump into this topic. So every brush I have talked about until now, you can use them for oils, acrylics and water like watercolors. I mean it's depending on the material and if they are soft or um, scorched so you know all these things I have talked about but there are also two other brushes like brush forms types you can use for watercolors and um, these are these two. I mean um, the softer one so um, from the form similar so I can show you but that's not the exact one and this one they can apply a lot of water especially this one you are using this one for like um, big flat brush strokes it is designed to hold a lot of water so you can uh, make smooth lines and um, make the first layer of your painting the positivity of it um, you can make like broad square edges and so on. So and this boy, this boy can achieve a lot of effects with this boy. It is like a thick round brush. It's nor really or either really rounded nor um, it's fun to, to create like the, the Chinese style. You can uh, look up. They are using brushes like this. So if you want to play around with that, grab one of these. Yeah, to be honest, um, it's just forms of the brushes are just helping us to achieve these different kind of effects. So it, you don't have to have them all. It's just uh, tools are making your work easier to achieve those effects and those lines and line weight what you want to have on your piece and yeah with with, with this what i have already told you depending on what kind of medium you want to use depending on what um, size of artwork you want to work with you only need like three brushes to start out but if you want to have like a bigger bite uh, of variety of brushes, you can start out with a whole set. But you don't have to. You don't have to. Because these sets, they don't have um, like quality. So if you want to have like really, really great brushes, then you have to buy them one by one. And, um, but you can buy a set and you will have plenty of brushes and it's a pretty, pretty great way to start. Or if you know that you want to spend a little bit more, just start, up, start out with like two of them. And that's it. That's it. No more. No more. Two. You need two. Two of them. That's it. And after that, you can go crazy like I am. <laughs> but believe me, you won't use every brush. So <laughs> there are some brushes I want to introduce you. I mean, probably you know them already, but still. So we will start with the round brush. That's the normal one. Then we have the pointed round brush. Then some of the details, like um, the zero brushes. This is, um, there is also like a long haired um, pointed round brush. This is very great for hairs and for grass homes and um, some other details if you are working with acrylics. I haven't tried it with watercolors, but it should be do the same great job, I would say. The flat brush this flat boy and from the flat brush you can see the angular flat brush 
so it's like cut off in half and also um, there are some like bright brushes but I don't have them so the two edges like the two edges are cut off also here is flybird so these are the round brushes I, um, you can use these guys specifically the round pointed brush for sketching outlining and also for detailed work so this one i would use for more detailed work you can use um, normal the round brushes as i said for sketching um, also for controlled brushes and filling in small areas you can play with it to to have like thin to thick lines and depending of the pushing so the next one is the flat brush a flat belly so it can um, hold a lot of water and uh, save it and can give it very great back to the surface you can make like uh, big washes so the whole background and the first wash you are using like with watercolors or the first layer with acrylics i would recommend to do with these big guys you can make bold strokes, washes, filling um, white spaces and um, you can also use the edge of the fly fine lines, like the upon part, using it in an angular. You can make very fine lines, I mean it's depending of course of the wideness of the brush. And there are also very long hair and short hair and you are using them differently of course so the long hair red you can use them very well for varnishing or versatile and you can have smooth patches of color and with the long hairs you can have also long bold strokes so there is another brush um, here it is bright like it is almost like a flat brush just it has very very short hairs so it's not very bendable but it can hold a lot of paint or pigment so you can have them like short controlled strokes the bright brush is better for working up close rather than holding the brush at a distance from the canvas so you will hold them very um, near to the end and it is very bad for layering in wet in wet because it will remove the, the under layer. So the next brush is the flybird. Um, the flybird is, um, yeah, you can use it very well for blending. It has soft rounded edges and it is very, very great for flower petals. You can also have like detail works but also flat, um, you can use them like a flat, so you can uh, cover big spaces. Thanks to the long bristles, you, um, you can use a lot of water, so a liquid paint, you can work with it very well, but it is not very great for like heavy paintings. And uh, thanks to its form, you can create a variety of marks. So from broad to li linear, you can have it all <laughs> without a square edge or a flat brush yeah so that's the baby it's very great for um, flowers and natural stuff but so the next brush the fan this funny guy and um, if you have a fan with natural hairs it is very great for smoothing blending and feathering but if you have static hairs um, you can have or create very great textural effects, cloud and leaves on trees. There is like an up, like a negative point. If you want to paint with acrylics and use a fan brush, you have to think about that the hairs are strong and sturdy. That's the word sturdy. Otherwise, the hair will clump. And um, so this brush. Uh, isn't great for acrylics. I have just made it wet and um, it's, It is clumping it is sticking together So I can achieve pretty great textures with it, but if you want to really have this fan um, 
like um, brush stroke you need really like a strong and sturdy hairs for that but not an, this isn't really a negative point it's just you have to know how to use your brushes and and what you can achieve with them another brush is the angular flat you can achieve with it like curved strokes and filling like small parts thanks to its thin nib so this isn't like a normal angular brush you can buy in a shop i have cut it off but it makes uh, its job and um, thanks to its form you can really achieve like very interesting forms depending on how you are holding your brush and um, how many pressure you are using for it you can reach small areas with the tip and you can also cover a lot of space like it is similar to flat brushes you only need it use it like differently this is the rigor um, this is a very thin round brush with very long hairs and it can hold a lot more liquid or paint like you would think you can paint with them very delicate branches tendrils, you can use them very greatly for lettering and other liner or calligraphy marks. So also great for hairs and natural stuff. So welcome to the end of this video. I hope you have liked it. If it's so, give a thumbs up. I'm trying to make the best out of it and making the best video for you guys. So if you could learn something out of this whole thing, let me know down in the comments below, please. And also if you want to hang out with me, um, I am streaming three times a week. So Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 4 p.m. CET. This is Central Europe time. Yeah, and it's always fun and I would love to see you there. So if you are new and want to see more, like you are new at my channel and want to see more um, from my content, subscribe and hit the notification button so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. And with this, I wish you a pleasant day. So bye.